Hi guys, and welcome back to Wildebeard Reviews. Tonight we're going to talk about Something is Killing the Children, issue 13, written by James Tinney IV, with art by Werther Tell Ladera, and holy crap, this series just keeps getting better and better. I absolutely love this issue. This issue. We are firmly in what I would call the climax of uh, what's going on in Archer's Peak. This issue is gory, it is bloody, it is full of amazing confrontation, both between the members of the House of Slaughter and the monsters and uh, Erica and the other members of the House of Slaughter. I absolutely love it. We get a quick glimpse of kind of the mindset from both Erica and the um, larger um, players there in the House of Slaughter and it's absolutely fantastic and it actually kind of reminds me of Star Wars and the Jedi uh, uh, the, um, the the Jedi Order. We'll talk about that once we get into it um, in a minute but the first few pages of this book are just pure unadulterated like monster gore and it is absolutely Absolutely fantastic. That is one thing that, that this series is not skimping on. It is just pedal to the metal. It just continues to build and build and grow in that regard. And just the tension continues to build in this. It actually feels almost like a TV show, like a boutique um, a grade A television show like on FX or HBO or, or like a great Netflix show or something to that effect where it is just really, really tight, amazing storytelling going on here. It actually even kind of feels uh, like a TV show because it's got that cold open where you uh, have that two-page sp uh, spread where it says something is killing the children there. But this is just absolutely amazing storytelling. This is what um, non-superhero comics is are, are all about, and I absolutely adore it. So that's enough uh, gushing from me. Let's go ahead here and, and jump into the pages because there is some amazing stuff in here. So uh, one quick thing, uh, these pages are kind of dark and I don't have the best lighting. I'm using just the overhead light in my office. Um, so uh, you may not get the, the greatest um, clarity on some of these pages with the, the lighting and my cheap webcams that I use, but if you have not read through this uh, this issue on your own, these images are just absolutely amazing. I love it. Uh, so we have this character here. Um, I believe her name is Maxine. She gets named on another page. Um, she is standing there kind of distracting one of the monsters as a bunch of the other um, care uh, the, the other um, members of the House of Slaughter uh, jump around and start hacking and slashing away at the um, uh, at the monster here and I love the aesthetic that they they bring there's just a uh, and I guess an aesthetic is is the, the best way to put it they're all wearing like suits I think Maxine herself is wearing um, wearing a skirt uh, along with the suit jacket and the or the blazer I guess you would call it and the um and the um and the, the tie and everything, but each of them has a different weapon. Like, this one looks like either a big pipe or, like, a hockey stick. We've got a samurai sword over here. Uh, someone's got a big knife, a baseball bat. I think someone has a hatchet uh, going on here. It's almost like they each have their own um, individual weapon, which is really cool, and I like the way that these characters are set apart um, from Erica herself, because, like I said, these are all, these characters here are all wearing these suits. Oh, they're almost like men in black style suits in the bandana as they have the colors are inverted from what Erica is usually wearing she usually has the the black bandana with the um, with the white uh, teeth my uh, teeth marks on it these are the opposite of that white bandanas with with black teeth so it, it they're very clearly from the same order but they're also very opposite from each other these characters are um, it's almost like again just something uh, to throw back to Star Wars it's like the the color motifs between um, the stormtroopers and uh, Han Solo and stick with me on this. So the stormtroopers wear white on the outside because they're supposed to be, you know, the benevolent government, but they are really rotten at the core because they have, you can see the black underneath. And then Han Solo presents as, you know, the scoundrel with the the black vest, but underneath he's, you know, truly a hero because he's got the white shirt. That kind of feels like this, you know, they've got the the, the standout white on there, but they have the black teeth. And then Erica has the black um the black bandana so she kind of presents early on as someone to maybe not be trusted but she has the whiter teeth maybe the more benevolent teeth i may be reaching on the metaphor here but hopefully you guys uh can kind of understand what i'm going for and then you can just see the gore down here as these uh members of the house of slaughter just go to town uh on this particular monster so once they're done uh maxine says uh or one of them says what do we do now maxine there are three or four more of them out there we can't stay out in the open 
likes this, and Maxine says, Let's go say hi to the locals. Remember what Cecilia said. Full containment we means we can be as bloody as we want as... They start moving towards the school, and then we get that amazing cold open, or the title card here after we've had our cold open again. That's where it always always feels like a TV show to me, and I've probably mentioned that once or twice before in these reviews, but I just love the way uh, that it's put together. So we go back here to uh, Erica Slaughter, um, and then the, the kid, James, and the other characters that we see there where Cecilia cut the cop's throat out um, in the last issue, and then over here... I love this conversation. This is what was reminding me of, of Star Wars that I mentioned in uh, previously. It feels like the House of Slaughter has maybe lost its own way, and that definitely feels uh, that seems to be what um, what Erica is talking about here. First off, um, she uh, Erica is yelling at Cecilia and saying, "You know what the hell is wrong with you?" And Cecilia says, "There are consequences, Erica. Uh, consequences to not following order protocols. Don't for a minute pretend that these deaths are all f our fault." And Erica's like, "No, how dare you?" Cecilia says, "You are the one that allowed this situation to." spiral out of control. You are the one who disobeyed the orders of your direct superior and let him die. You have forced our hand and we do not like to be forced. And Erica to that says, one of these days, I really hope uh, it sinks in for you uh, that it wasn't the deaths of a few dozen kids that brought an entire branch of the House of Slaughter out of Chicago. You came here to kill monsters, not people. To which Cecilia says, I came here to uh, fulfill my duties and uphold the secrecy that allowed our order to continue to operate, which does save children. And Erica says, when's the last time you even saw a monster with your own two eyes? And I love it. I absolutely love it. So it feels like to me here that Erica is, you know, the one that is still in line with what the spirit of the, um, the House of Slaughter was originally meant to do to protect the world from these monsters, to protect children from these monsters, to go out out there, be the boots on the ground, take care of these monsters as they come up, and now um, that that's where she is, but it feels like the Order itself, here personified by Cecilia, is, you know, has kind of lost that way. They're putting the Order themselves before the people they're supposed to be uh, protecting. They are there to, yes, take down the monsters, but also make sure that the order itself is is safe, and she's justifying that by saying, if we keep the order safe, then we can continue to save children, but that, that doesn't feel genuine to me. It feels like she's definitely putting the, the sanctity of the order before anything else, and to me, that reminds me of prequel era um, Star Wars, where we have the Jedi Temple that is too mired in its own politics, internally and externally with the Galactic Senate and everything like that. It can't see the own creeping rot underneath itself with the Sith and everything like that, and that's eventually what causes it to fall, and you could probably say that um, Erica Slaughter here is like a Qui-Gon Jinn style character who um, is still that person that wants to be out there in, in the universe doing what the Order originally was meant to do while the Order itself back in the headquarters of the galaxy is you know mired in its own political bullshit and it's it's rotting from the inside so that's just a really cool parallel that I saw um, from this page and I love the dynamic between these two Erica the one out there on the ground literally getting bloody she's got blood on her shirt out there trying to do what the order originally intended and actually save these kids and not destroy an entire town just to pr um, preserve uh, the order. So, uh, one other thing I want to point out on this page, um, we know that they have, um, the members of the House of Slaughter have different powers where they can see, their, their vision allows them to see these monsters, and I wanted to point out the different eye colors here. Um, Erica's are green, and Cecilia, Cecilia's are like a red or a uh, fuchsia or something like that, and I think um, the other character that came from the House of Slaughter in the previous issues that was there for Erica had maybe amber or hazel eye color. I wonder if... Um, the different eye colors mean something else. Maybe they have a different form of sight, or they can see something additional that the green-eyed ones can't, or if it's just like whatever color your natural eye colors are, uh, react differently to whatever they do to allow you to see the monsters. Like, you know, brown eyes turn magenta, blue eyes turn green, or, or something to that effect. It's just something uh, that I noticed here and want to see if it um, if that plays up later on. So while they are, are fighting, there are intrepid detectives 
detective there manages to not die for a second, pull his gun, takes a shot at Cecilia, as you can see up here in this panel. One of the uh, the members there jumps in front and takes a, a gunshot to the wound, and the others take him down. Our, our cop tries to uh, utter a uh, bloodily gurgled fuck you to Cecilia, good man, those are his <laughs> dying words, and then he gets a knife in the brain, but that gives... Erica enough time to get uh, Beyond and James away and get them uh, get them to relative safety. Love this panel here, just absolutely um, textless, but you can see just the fear uh, from the, in, in Erica's eyes. I love that the Werther uh, Deladera art. I don't always call out the the colors. That's something I'm, I try to work on. Uh, but Mikel um, Muerto, I believe, is how you uh, pronounce that. Amazing uh, colors as well. Uh, so they jump down into the ravine system that kind of connects a lot of um, Archer's Peak together, and they're going to start running around trying to get back to um, to James's house where the monster was originally incepted. Looks like um, uh, James ripped open his stitches from where he got shot back in issue five. Maybe six, can't quite remember uh, where that was, but they are um, running around the, um, the um, ravine system, and then they do eventually get to... Um, get to his house i love this from beyond here um uh, she asks is john is john dead and erica says yeah and she says that's too bad he let me bring all the colors oh the mind of a child um so back at the school uh maxine and the rest of the uh the members of the house of slaughter are trying to get in you can see that she tells them on the phone find another way in uh of note i wanted to point this out i don't know if it's a tattoo or maybe a scar from where she got poked with the thing that allows her to see um the monsters we saw that happened to Tommy back in that first story arc. Again, issue five or six, uh, something to that effect. Uh, the guys, in, uh, everyone inside is trying to figure out what to do. Uh, not too much um, of note to dive in, into. They're just kind of progressing the story. Um, the House of Slaughter turns off the power and then they ram a car uh, through the door and then they, uh, Maxine tells everyone, everyone get together in the center of the gym if you want to get through this alive. I think that's a load of bullshit. Uh, but we'll see uh, what happens happens there and we can see them with the yeah the weapons here total uh total line light of crap so Erica gets the two kids um, back to the place where it started, um, where the monster was originally incepted. We kind of learned some of the rules of how monsters come around in issue 12, maybe it was issue, no, I think it was definitely issue uh, 12 from uh, last month. Um, so she sends the kids down and says, this is going to be dangerous and more than a little scary, but if I need you both to answer every question I have honestly and directly. We'll lure the monsters here and I'll finish the job from there, okay? Then she tells her little stuffed octopus look i don't want any of your crap you know how bad it's gotten and what we need to get done and the little monster says i know then she says good now show the children your real face and there we go we finally actually get to see the spirit that is tied to this little monster plushy thing and if they boom studios if you merchandise this series and you make these I will buy one, and you know, if we're going to keep wearing masks uh, throughout 2021, uh, merchandise these masks, and I'll buy one of those um, as well. So, another fantastic issue, and what is a series that I would absolutely recommend to anyone. If anyone came to me and says, I want to read a comic book, but I don't want superhero stuff, and maybe I kind of like horror, this would be one of the books that I hand them. 100% I would recommend this to anyone that has even a little bit of an interest in horror, or even a little bit of an interest in comic books and if they have a little bit of interest in both this is even better uh, for it so guys i love this issue i love this series tell me your thoughts on this one on the comments down below thank you guys so much for watching if it's your first time here at the channel and you enjoyed this video do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button for me it would absolutely mean a lot if you want to support the channel into the description box down below there are a number of ways of supporting the channel i have a patreon if you want to check that out i also have an ask me anything tip page where you can leave a tip to the channel and ask me a question and I'll do a video or uh, on that here on the channel. Also have a PO box if you want to send me any goodies in the mail. Once again guys thank you so much for watching and until next time we'll see you at the comic shop.